Hi, I'm Wes Mantooth, and I'm going to be talking to you today about this book, The Writer's Reference, and how you can use this to help you to better understand the errors of writing inside of your um, papers. This, this is something where you can use this on your own, or it could be that instructors in your classes have given you feedback and use it. So I prepared a PowerPoint presentation which will explain to you how the writer's reference book works, kind of in general, what's inside of the writer's reference book, how the letter number codes work inside the book, and once you get an understanding of those letter number codes, then you should be able to use the letter number codes and add some information about your own writing to this chart. And when you've added that information, you can do a lot of things with it, including getting a sense of your own patterns of error, and you can go to the writer's reference website and do some exercises on there. And this could be a very useful document for people, so I hope that the PowerPoint will be useful. Okay, so we're going to be talking about something that I call the Writing Improvement Analysis, or WIA, or WIA assignment. And more generally, we'll be talking about how a writer's reference, the textbook, can help you to analyze and improve your own writing. You may have heard of the textbook, A Writer's Reference. It's one that's widely used among instructors at LWIT. Um, it's used in English 100, English 101, English 102. So one of the features of this book is that it uses a system of letter number codes to categorize a wide variety of concepts related to writing. So the letter number code G6C would just be one example of letter number codes that you'll find within the book. One of the features of this book is that it uses a system of letter number codes to categorize a wide variety of concepts related to writing. So I've shown you here um, the detailed menu that you'll find in the inside back cover of the writer's reference book. And if you look really closely, you can see a wide range of letter number codes. And I've pulled out here the G6 section, which deals with run-on sentences. And we'll be pulling an example from that G6 section in this presentation today. The first letter in a code refers to the broad category concept falls into. So in the composition style section of the book, you'll find C relates to composing and revising, A is academic writing, S is sentence style, W is word choice. In the correctness section, you'll find four subsections, and each of those have their own capital letters. G is grammatical sentences, M is multilingual writers and ESL challenges, P is punctuation, and B is basic grammar. And then you can even break down these capital letters into smaller sections. So for example, the G section, which is grammatical sentences, includes these letter number codes. G1 is subject verb agreement, G2 verb forms and tenses and moods, G3 is pronouns, and so on. And then finally, most of these letter number codes end in small lowercase letters, and these codes guide you to the most specific writing principles. For example, the G6 section, and that's the one that deals with run-on sentences, uses lowercase letters A, B, C, and D to show you four different approaches to revising a run-on sentence, which you can see below. So these codes can be used as one way of giving feedback on papers. Here's an example sentence below, and let's say that you've written that sentence and your teacher has circled a comma and written G6C next to it, and you're wondering, what could this mean? Using a writer's reference, you can look up that code, and more importantly, you can learn about that particular writing concept and use that information to strengthen your own writing. If you were to go to the G6 section of a writer's reference, you would first of all read that run-on sentences are independent clauses that have not been joined correctly, and it would explain that an independent 
clause is a word group that can stand alone as a sentence. When two independent clauses appear in one sentence, they have to be joined in one of these ways. You can use a comma and a coordinating conjunction, and, but, or, nor, for, so, or yet, or a semicolon. One useful technique is to look at the book's examples of run-on sentences and try to find examples that are grammatically similar to your own sentence. So let's say your student's sentence is the following. Louise Erdrich's essay, Beneath My House, contains several thought-provoking sentences, comma, Erdrich writes that what the body remembers of birth that anticipates is death. And you look at the book example, which says, air pollution poses risk to all humans. It can be deadly for asthma sufferers. And hopefully you can recognize that in both cases, you have a comma splice, two independent clauses that are joined with a comma, but without a coordinating conjunction. And that will then give you the basis to start figuring out how to repair that run on sentence. After reading about run-on sentences and looking at various examples, you should be able to figure out how to do this. The book explains that there are several ways to fix a run-on, and each is described in a separate section, G6, A, B, C, and D. So your teacher may have written G6C, and, and the teacher may be trying to say that in that particular case, the best way to fix a sentence is that revision strategy. Consider making the clauses into separate sentences. So you can look at an example sentence like the one below and read about why a period would be the, the best way to fix it. As it explains here, it's more effective to, do, to use a period than any other way because the second independent clause has a signal phrase according to Stanford and that would be awkward to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction in that case, probably. So you would want to try the same revision method in your own sentence using a period. You would be free to experiment with other ways of fixing the sentence as well, but the teacher would be trying to give you that additional guidance by putting the C after G6. So using a process like what we've just seen with this one mark, you can look up all the different marks an instructor might have put on your papers. There could be things that start with S, things that start with M, things that start with P, a wide variety of things that come from the writer's reference book. And you'll become more independent as, as a writer if you first try to understand the material on your own. But of course, if you feel confused, be sure to get additional help from the instructor or from a tutor who's familiar with how to look up codes in a writer's reference. You can go even further to improve your writing by charting the range of letter number codes that relate to your own writing. You might, in your own writing, have codes that come from the S section, from the P section, from the M section, from the C section. You might be getting these codes from your instructor, from a tutor, or even from your own exploration of a writer's reference. If you chart these codes over a series of papers, you'll get insights into a particular area of your writing that you can focus on improving. Here's a suggestion. In the Writing Tutoring Center, you can pick up a blank chart that looks like the one below, and you can use these to record the various letter number codes you have gotten on your papers. If you're aware of a writing concept that you need to work on, write its code in the appropriate section. These sections are organized as they appear in a writer's reference. And if the same code occurs multiple times, it would be a good idea to put a plus by the code for each time it occurs, and that way you have a visual way of seeing which codes are most significant for you. You can also use your word processor to adapt the template for your own use by adding or deleting cells as appropriate. Do this by right-clicking in a cell and selecting Insert or Delete. So here's a sample section filled out by a student, and you can see this is the G section. The student seems to be having particular trouble in the G5B section, attach fragmented phrases or turn them into sentences. 
So that would help the student and potentially an instructor or a tutor to see which areas the student would want to focus on and get help on. So one thing that you might want to do if you find that you're having trouble in a particular area like this is to go to the Writer's Reference website, and I've put the link for that here. And you can do a variety of exercises, such as the one below on sentence fragments. So exercises typically come in sets of 10, and most of them are multiple choice, choosing between two possible answers. A nice thing about these exercises is, is, is that they provide you feedback to tell you why your answer is correct. Or why it's incorrect. So after you've done 10 exercises, you'll probably start to get a good sense of what the concept is about. Some instructors, and I'm included in that, may assign a formal writing improvement analysis assignment that incorporates some of these activities you've just seen in this presentation. Besides charting your errors, as you've seen below, um, a WIA assignment may also ask you to reflect more globally on what you believe you can do to improve your overall writing process and product. For example, you might reflect on which of your errors resulted from a lack of careful proofreading and which resulted from not understanding certain concepts. You might also reflect on whether you feel that your writing has been improving over a certain period of time, and that could be within one individual quarter or it could be from quarter to quarter. Okay, so we've taken quite a bit of time to go over this. That's it for now. Remember, come to the Writing Tutoring Center to pick up a blank chart to record your letter number codes. And tutors have many copies of the writer's reference on hand, and they'll be glad to assist you in getting started on this new way to improve your writing. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's some introductory information. I hope that's been useful to everybody. If anybody has any questions, um, please come into the Writing Tutoring Center, and anybody can help to get you started on this process. Thank you very much.